Welcome back to our fifth day together. This is Matthew Johnson, and I am the pastor at Glencoe United Methodist Church. Um, I'm glad you're here with us today. Unfortunately, this is our last devotion for the week, but the good news is our Sunday worship service will be uploaded online on Sunday morning. So more to come real soon. And more good news is that next Monday we will start another week of daily devotionals um, all together. So you get a whole nother week. Um, Also, if you didn't know, next week is Holy Week. So we will be having worship service on Thursday evening, Friday evening, and then, of course, Sunday, which will be Easter. So you'll have the daily devotionals, but then you'll have these worship services in the evening. So you'll have both so you can get some double doses. During the uh, service of uh, during the services, you know, we will be attempting to have them uh, virtually, just like we have been on our Sundays. Um, they'll be slightly different. Um, the there won't necessarily there will be some changes. You'll notice them when you watch them. Now, for Sunday morning for Easter, we're going to try to virtually have communion. Now, I know this sounds weird, but we um, the bishop has uh, given us some uh, guidelines for this, and we want and John Wesley emphasized very strongly the importance of communion, and this is a way that uh, us pastors can try to reach out um, to you all virtually, and all of us uh, have communion together in a space that is not typical. Now, we will not do this anymore once uh, we come back together. We'll do it traditionally again. But for now, we're going to try this at least this Sunday, uh, This uh, up, not this Sunday, but the Sunday of Easter, just to see how it works. If it doesn't work, we'll reevaluate. But I need something for you, from you. For this service, you do need to acquire a couple of things. So during the worship service at the church, we do usually use bread and grape juice. If you can acquire some sort of bread or crackers, that would be great. If you already have it, then you're set. Just set it to the side enough for everybody there to have at least a bite. And then have some grape juice, at least enough for people to take it a little sip. So you don't have to go out and buy a big thing of it if you don't if you don't want to. Um if you can't get a hold of grape juice for any reason or you don't have any and you don't feel comfortable going out to get grape juice, if you have any other kind of juice, it'll suffice. Um, we, we will work with what we have. And if you can't get any juice at all, please just use water. Uh, water is a very special substance in Scripture, and I think that it'll suffice for this. However, grape juice is definitely what we want to strive to use. Now, for our last activity of the week, uh, I want you to look back at all of the other activities that you have done this week and ask yourself this following question. Am I living a life that is worthy of Christ's gospel? Or differently put, this is another way of thinking of it, am I living a life that honors Jesus? Now, since you will be looking at multiple days, or at least reflecting on the last four days that came, um, <clears throat> please pause this video and take as much time or as little time as you need. Go right ahead. Now we're back, um, and we'll get back to your activity here momentarily. But first, let's have um, our scripture reading for the day, which comes from the epistle to the Philippians, uh, chapter 1, verses 21 through 30 from the Common English Bible, uh, and or the CEB. And so hear now the word of God. Because for me, living serves Christ and dying is even better. If I continue to live in this world, I get results from my work, but I don't know what I prefer. I'm torn between the the two because I want to leave this life and be with Christ, which is far better. However, it's more important for me to stay in this world for your sake. I'm sure of this. I will stay alive and remain with all of you to help your progress and the joy of your faith and increase your pride in Jesus Christ through my presence when I visit you again. Most important, live together in a manner worthy of Christ's gospel. Do this, whether I come and see you or I'm absent and hear about you. Do this so you, that you stand firm, united in one spirit and mind, as you struggle together to remain faithful to the gospel. 
That way, you won't be afraid of anything your enemies do. Your faithfulness and courage are a sign of their coming destruction and your salvation, which is from God. God has generously granted you the privilege, not only of believing in Christ, but also of suffering for Christ's sake. And you have the same struggle that you saw me face, and now hear that I'm facing. Friends, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today, our scripture is comes from Paul, who has been imprisoned and is going to be tried to, to determine whether he was going to be uh, executed or not. And so when he's talking from this place of he's not sure whether he wants to live or die, he's coming from a place of uncertainty, a, a place of mystery. And I think we can relate to that a little bit today. With this coronavirus pandemic, we it's, my, it's mysterious as to what life is going to look like a week from now. It's un, it's unsure what life's going to look like after everything is over. We don't know what the new life post-coronavirus is going to be, but we do know that we are right now here in this mystery, right now living in a time of uncertainty, and it's okay to do that. It's okay to be unsure as to how to feel. It's okay to be scared, but it's also okay to feel not afraid. I think that, you know, when we approach uh, our life, we have to remember that in the Gospels and in the New Testament in general, when you read these letters as well, you know, in addition to the Gospels, you see a lot of uncertainty flowing around. You see a lot of issues taking place, or especially in like Paul's letters, there's issues being addressed. And this, and those issues were derived because of uncertainty in those times and the areas. So we have to think about how we are living our lives as Christians. We have to think about how we're living our lives in this uncertainty. I had you reflect upon earlier activities this week because I wanted you to think about what all we've done. This whole week we've been building more and more about ourselves and about what our gifts are. But why? Why have we been doing what we've been doing? Why have we taken the time to think about uh, details? Why have we thought about our gifts? Why have we thought about all these different things that has gotten us here? Well, let me put it this way. We've gotten here because we are trying to live a life worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are trying to live a life that honors Jesus in all that we do. And sometimes, all the time actually, you have to stop and think, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Am I doing what I need to do? And a lot of times it's hard because we get caught up in life. Our society says we got to keep going, 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 going. It says we got to be in charge of our own life. We got to do all these things. Society does not dictate who we are. At least it shouldn't. Jesus should. Paul talks in um, Paul talks a lot about his dual citizenship, about having his citizenship in Rome as a Roman, but his, also his citizenship in heaven. And I think we need to consider that as human beings, as people here on Earth, as Americans, even if you're watching this here in the U.S. We have to consider what does it mean to be a citizen of America or a citizen of this country, a citizen on the, in the world as a human being? And what does it mean to be a citizen of heaven? To be a citizen of heaven, we truly should be living into our citizenship, just as many live into their citizenship as Americans. It's something to think about, friends. I don't think that we need to, to harp on that right now. This, that's not important. What's most important is that we are continuing to live a life that is worthy of the gospel. This means not being one of those individuals who goes out and buys all of the hand sanitizer in the store. This, does not, this means not being the person who goes and buys all of the toilet paper in the store. This means not creating fights over 
um, different items that you were looking for when you find out that someone has the last items. This means not stealing. This means not lying to others in order to gain anything. Now, I don't think that you necessarily are doing any of this, but the fact of the matter is, these are obvious things. Have you thought about in your life how you might be doing things that are obvious, but you don't necessarily see them because of being blinded by all that's going on? Or maybe they're just subtle and they're not so obvious. And those things that you're doing are not actually worthy of the gospel. Those things are not part of your, uh, that those things affect your citizenship with the kingdom of God. I want you to think about these things this day as we end this week and go as we enter into the last um, Sunday of Lent, the last Sunday before Easter, which is Palm Sunday. That's this Sunday. And what we're going to talk about on Sunday is Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. I look forward to seeing you there. And I hope that these uh, devotionals have been helpful for you and have been formational to you to help you be more, help you live a life that is more worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And now for our final quote of the week, it comes from one of my favorite authors and um, human beings and uh, ministers, Mr. Fred Rogers. He is amazing. I love him to death, and I miss him dearly. Um, he was so wise, and he was ministering to so many on TV, even if he never even really mentioned God's name. That, my friends, is what a man of God looks like. But let's now turn into here um, to a quote that he, he quoted uh, Will Durant, um, and I think that we can relate this to today and to what I've been speaking to. This is what he says. I often think of what Will Durant wrote in The Story of Civilization. Civilization is a stream with banks. The stream is sometimes filled with blood from people killing, stealing, shouting, and doing things historians usually record. While on the banks, unnoticed, people build homes, make love, raise children, sing songs, write poetry, whittle statues. The story of civilization is the story of what happens on the banks. Friends, the story of Christianity is what happens when we are acting and serving and living out a life that is worthy of the gospel. We need to live out a life that is worthy, one that shows to everyone that our citizenship in heaven, our citizenship into the kingdom of God is that important. Now, friends, let us pray together. O oh God, who loves each and every one of us without conditions, we thank you for delivering us through this week. As we all attempt to navigate through this new reality called life, please allow your infinitely blowing Holy Spirit to fill our lungs and penetrate our very core so that we may live a life that is worthy of Christ's gospel. May we be guided as faithful disciples of Jesus and may we live a life that will help others to know you. And as we enter into Holy Week, please continue to prepare our hearts for what lies ahead. We ask all of these things through your Son's name. Amen. Friends, go in peace this day. Serve the Lord always. And remember to live a life that is worthy of Jesus' gospel. Thanks be to God.